And it is three minutes past the hour. Harris with you, your new best friend. Welcome to the Smart Show. We are going to have so much fun today, so much frolic, so much mayhem and merriment. I am horripilating in double anticipatory delight. (laughs) We're going to be doing a Star Trek spectacular because the vision of Star Trek, which has lasted so many decades, has always been about can there be a better future? And the answer was always yes. This was Gene Roddenberry's vision. This was what ultimately got canceled during the original 1960s series. It was too radical. You had communists everywhere, therefore you put a Russian on the bridge of the battleship. Why, you had black people who still could barely vote, so you put one of them as an officer, as a female, on the bridge of the battleship. Mm -hmm. And you have all kinds of people that were all sort of the enemy, all cohabitating and working together for the betterment of all humankind. And so we're going to be bringing on, in just a couple of minutes, Tim Russ. Tim, you know, from Star Trek Voyager. He played Tuvok, the Vulcan, and he is a very outspoken and wonderful social critic. He's also an activist, cares extremely deeply about the world, and he's going to talk to you about the state of the world and politics as seen through the eyes of a recurring Star Trek character. We're also going to be premiering for the first time ever the uncut, worldwide, public screening of a feature-length Star Trek film called Star Trek of Gods and Men. It's 90 minutes long. It's never been shown from beginning to end, just in basic clips. It's never been allowed to have a theatrical release. And Tim is going to tell you why. It stars Lieutenant Uhura and Chekhov and all the characters you know throughout all the different feature-length films, all the different TV shows, every permutation. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be exclusive here. We are streaming right now at GoHarrison.com where you can watch this entire program. You can see Tim, Russ, yourself. You can watch the premiere premiere of Star Trek of Gods and Men at the end of the hour at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern, and on GoHarrison.line. Rewind. I can speak backwards, you know. (laughs) On GoHarrison.com or thesmartshow.org, you're going to be able to see this entire film back to back. Then at 6 p.m. tonight, at 6 p.m. tonight Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, depending where you are, we're going to do a live Harrison's Hollywood Hangout on GoHarrison.com with Tim Ross Live talking to you, the fan. We're going to have people uh, queue, and all you need is a video cam. You can video chat. Go to harrisonshangout.com, harrisonshangout.com at that time. It's through Google Circles, and you can talk one-on-one with Tim Russ wherever you are in the world, unexpurgated, uncensored, and without the benefit of the FCC. So you can say words like, uh, let me think of one of those words that might be nice. How about... Tea baggies. There you go. (laughs) Whatever kind of fits your particular shoe that moment. So that's coming up. And you'll notice, for those of you watching, you have to watch to win here online because I have an authentic Star Trek (gasps) Tribble. No. Look at that. Mercy, touch the Tribble. Oh, it's soft. Now give back the Tribble. Give me my Tribble. Oh, sorry. Isn't it beautiful? An authentic Star Trek Tribble. And we're going to be giving this away. And we're going to offer in just a few moments after the beginning of the interview the question that you're going to have to answer, the Star Trek question, and somebody is going to win this authentic Star Trek Tribble. Woohoo! And we'll probably also give away a copy of the film later on. They're trouble, though. I just want to let you know. This does. It already ate Wiley my chihuahua, (laughs) but it grunted it out like a small Cohiba. And And he's smarter now. And he's much smarter now, (laughs) that's for sure. All right, without further ado, um, we're going to join a conversation I just finished with Tim. So he's uh, standing by, and let's now say hi to Tim Russ. And we all know him as Tuvok from Star Trek Voyager. Again, we're going to be premiering the movie at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Here's Tim Russ talking about the world just for you. Tim Russ, I want to welcome you to Go Harrison. And thank you, by the way, for having spent so many years teaching us these wonderful lessons about life. And you may, as an actor, think, lessons? Are you kidding? I'm an actor. But no, you're not. You're like a role model for so many of us. Uh, yeah, in fact, in uh, fact, I, I have heard, uh, along with some of my uh, predecessors, about uh, sort of the impact that the series itself has on people who decide to go into science and study science for uh, uh, as, 
a career. And uh, I, I am always impressed by that when I hear people actually tell me that, you know, I watched your show and as a result I became very much interested in science and math and things like that and actually pursued a, a career, for example, in a, a physics, astrophysics, um, um, astrobiology, etc., um, astronomy. The and I easy think that's stuff. Cool. That yes, the easy could stuff that anybody could just, yeah, just follow Most of us do. do. <laughs> my grandmother at 99. Hold on, <laughs> let me get my... <laughs> Well, I think that's probably the cool thing, is that we find in science fiction, whether it's Isaac Asimov or even L. Ron Hubbard, who gave us the gift of Scientology, um, these people are not knuckle-walking rubes. They actually are high-functioning. That's right. And I think that's why, why science fiction is so valuable to us, right. is it actually does the thinking for us as to what the possibility of the future might look like. Right. And, and also an examination of our own society. Uh, the way that human beings uh, deal with each other and how we interact and uh, uh, the, the, the different cultures and how the cultures uh, from time to time will clash, uh, how we uh, don't get along and sometimes get along in terms of, uh, in those terms as well. And it examines all of that stuff by dressing it up in sort of a sci-fi alien format and it does it very, it has done it since Gene uh, conceived it, has done it very successfully uh, examining the social issues, social mores, things like that. So it's, you know, uh, the show has a great deal to offer uh, beyond the uh, pure entertainment value of it. And what you do, Tim, is you bring back the original Star Trek characters, or many of them, yes. put them together on the big screen in a, in a sort of a fan-based model. In other words, we have the comfort of seeing the original Enterprise set again, right. plus we have uh, all the different stories, I think over the decades, have all been kind of uh, interwoven together. This is absolutely wonderful. And for some, it's going to be a surprise that this even exists. Yeah. Uh, initially, uh, I was approached by Sky Conway, who was the, who was the producer, and uh, he asked me if I was interested in working on a, a feature film Star Trek project, a full, full-length full feature. And I thought, well, that's that's interesting. What's the script look like? And he said, well, we don't have one yet. Um, I'd like to work with a couple of writers that we have uh, who have written uh, episodes for uh, the series in the past, and, and myself, and uh, four of us come, come together with a story uh, that we can uh, put down on paper and then shoot. And we had somebody, uh, the guy named Mac, who was an executive producer, who backed it for us. And uh, we sat down and put the story together. And each of us had certain elements that we wanted to include in, in the script, whatever it would come out to be. Yeah. And so we managed to put a story together with, with having those, each of our, uh, uh, the desired elements we wanted to have in it, together. Um, uh, mine, in particular, had to do with uh, seeing our cast members that we are so familiar with in their roles being put in another circumstance, another set of roles that you've never seen them in before uh, and and then figure out how they got there what they do while they're there and how they get out of it and that was where the other elements of the story came together using some of our uh, characters from the original series and I think it was either Sky or Ethan Cox's uh, idea to have some of the characters bring back a couple of characters from the original series to be part of the story so that's how they got in there so we all contributed we also wanted to make a little bit of commentary here and there on what was happening in our own society currently yeah. which has to do with uh, terrorism, security, what do you give up for security, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and people who uh, fight for freedom uh, and how they are viewed from the, from the people who are, from the power, the people in power, uh, the, how a rebel force might be viewed from, from the people who are in, they are fighting against, and then from their viewpoint back the other way. So we had all kinds of elements in there that are actually happening in the world today that we'd kind of examine. Harrison with you. You are watching and listening to Go Harrison. You can see live video right now at GoHarrison.com as you listen on KPFK 90.7 FM in Los Angeles, 98.7 FM in Santa Barbara, 93.7 in San Diego, 99.5 in Central California. Of course, this is available on YouTube and DirecTV as well. We're talking to Tim Russ, most famously known as Tuvok on Star Trek Voyager, uh, an American actor, a film director, screenwriter, and a musician who, by the way, can play one hell of a guitar. If you're down and confused you don't remember who you're talking to Concentration slips away Because your baby, you're so far away Well, there's a rose in a fist of love And the ego lies with the dove And if you can't be with the one you love Honey, love the one you're with Love the one you win. Love the one you win. Love the one you win. Don't 
Don't be angry. Don't be sad. Don't sit proud. Tim Russ, uh, you know him from Voyager as Lieutenant Commander Tuvok, uh, Samantha Who, and also the live action teen sitcom iCarly as Principal Franklin, a recurring character that you're doing over and over and over again. And thank you for that, by the way. Um, that is my pleasure. Um, I read for that series, uh, it was a Nickelodeon series, uh, three or four years ago uh, for the pilot and this recurring role, and, uh, they, and I managed to land it, and it was, what I did not realize is just how popular uh, that show is uh, amongst uh, its, its fan base. Um, if I was, uh, if I was caught, uh, taken aback by the number of people who would stop me and, and uh, compliment me on the role from Star Trek, the number of kids that watch that show it's it's it, it, that's exponential in terms of the places and and the number of people that that, that uh, will recognize me from it uh, I I can tell you I've actually been uh, mobbed and or surrounded by a bunch of kids at one time on more than one occasion <laughs> simply because that many kids watch that show that is so universal in terms of its fan base across the country and uh, and I've only done I don't know nine or ten episodes of it so it's really remarkable well it shows the power of media doesn't it yes it, it does. shows the power Power of um, being in people's living rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, I had talked to Dan Rather about five years ago, I think, and I said, Dan, what happens when you've spent over 15 years in people's living rooms? They know you. They know you. You were there during their dinner time, night after night. You walk into the grocery store. Um, Horace runs up to you. He knows you. You've never met him. And by God, he wants time. He's got an hour's worth of stuff to tell you. And you're buddies, right? <laughs> I mean, how does that work? Uh, that is the the most uh, that is the most bizarre thing. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm Dan's going to work. I'm going to work. It, that's it's a job. I mean, I'm working, you know, 16 hours a day. I'm exhausted when I get home. I don't think about it that much. When I'm off the show for a number of years even, I'm certainly not thinking about it on a daily basis at all. You are right. Something about the big screen or the television screen, when someone is on it, they become larger than life. And so, and, and, and people are familiar with them in that context. So that when they see them outside of that context, something takes place that makes them, like you said, feel as they feel as as though they know you, uh, even if it was playing a character that wasn't you. Dan, of course, is himself yeah. reporting. So there's a little bit of a difference there. I'm playing a character. It's not me. It's a character. But they feel that they, they know you through the character, you know, and there's automatically, you're right, you have to, you're, 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 you're sort of obligated to, to spend that time with them, however short it may be. Uh, and it simply is something that transforms the perception of human beings when they see you off the screen. And quite honestly, you know, I, I would probably be, there's a few people out there that I have listened to in radio and television. Sure. Uh, in terms of um, maybe a documentary, maybe a, a news broadcast, maybe a, a radio host who I would simply, you know, I would be doing the same thing uh, with wanting to talk to them, but although that would be based on who they are and what they say right. and what they believe in and what they fight for and I would be if I'm impressed by that I would want to share that Star Trek Voyager's Tim Russ coming up at the end of the hour we're going to be doing the exclusive online uncut 90 minute premiere of Star Trek of Gods and Men only on GoHarrison.com Lock it in coming up more Harrison on the Smart Show Completely unsponsored common sense commuter traffic. At 17 minutes past the hour, this is your Go Harrison Live and Local Traffic Report on KPFK. Let's get started in Rosemead on the 10 West at Rosemead Boulevard where there's a crash that now has a fuel leak. That's in the right hand lane as crews work to clear that up. Traffic is slow from Peck Road. In Downey on the 5 South, traffic is stop and go from the 605 to Beach Boulevard. Northbound lanes are also slow from Imperial to Florence. And in the Sepulveda Pass on the 405 South at Bel Air Crest, there's a limousine with a flat tire off the right Aww, side. Yeah, limousine. Not too much. Uh, <laughs> not, to, not too much slowing there on the southbound side, but northbound. Who, who lanes, was in it? I don't know, but there's a lot of slowing on the northbound side. I can only assume it's uh, Kim uh, Kardashian Lewis trying to figure out who it is. <laughs> no, she would have had a helicopter come pick her up by now. Good point. <laughs> Excellent. 
Uh, again, slowing uh, in the northbound lanes from about Montana up through the Sepulveda Pass. Today's traffic brought to you by me. That's All right. right. Yeah. Jeff Thomas. KPFK 90.7 <laughs> FM, Los Angeles. 98.7 FM, Santa Barbara. Worldwide at kpfk.org. Radio truly powered by the people. Thank you. Locking in. Coming up, more Harrison on The Smart Show. It's the wives of... Late this year, the men of the Starship Enterprise will make their final voyage. Who will take their place? It's the wives of Star Trek. Mrs. Scott. We need more Chablis on the bridge if we're going to make that blue light special on k before it ends. You cannot do it, Mrs. Captain. We need more Waterford Crystal. Well, then wash some more. My nails will not stand the strain. Mrs. Spock, <laughs> quickly, analysis. I'm sorry, Mrs. Captain. I'm experiencing a mood swing. Mrs. Bones, you're needed on the bridge. Mrs. Spock is under attack by her, um, you know. Damn it, Mrs. Jim. You just made my souffle fall. I'm a homemaker, not a gynecologist. Should I give her a back rub, Mrs. Captain? Keep your hands to yourself, <laughs> Mr. O'Hara, but report to my quarters in 15 minutes. All right, baby. <clears throat> Miss Sulu, chart a course for Frozen Glodja 3. The Wives of Star Trek, coming to a theater near you. Beam up the Avon representative, Mrs. Scotty. Moisturize. Totally horrifying. <laughs> so that's my vote. It is 20 minutes past the hour. Harrison with you, your new best friend. You are listening to The Smart Show on KPFK 90.7 FM in Los Angeles. And, of course, watching a live video stream at GoHarrison.com as we do every single week. Today we're talking to Tim Russ. Tim, as you know, famously Tuvok from Star Trek Voyager. And we are doing something very fun. In just about 40 minutes, we're going to do the worldwide premiere of the uncut public screening ever, end-to-end, never done before, 90-minute feature-length new Star Trek film, actually not so new, but it was never released in the theaters, called Star Trek of Gods and Men, directed by Tim Russ himself, and we're doing a giveaway right now, a real live Star Trek Tribble, but you have to be watching to win, you'll text to the number on your screen, and uh, we're going to probably get a million texts, so it'll be the number 93, text number 93 is going to win this genuine Star Trek Tribble. This is so cool, here's your question, who commanded the USS Enterprise NCC 1701B in Star Trek Generations. He's also in the movie. Who commanded the USS Enterprise NCC 1701B in Star Trek Generations? Text the number on your screen at goharrison.com where we're streaming live. And now let's ask Tim Russ the very simple question. People think you're a real Vulcan when they meet you in public and you're smiling. <laughs> How do they react? Um, I get that uh, when they see me perform, if I'm performing music or if I'm doing a, a panel at a, at a convention, they all and, 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 or it's sitting at the table signing that they see me smiling all the time. There are elements of, of Tuvok uh, in my personality. Um, and people that know me personally, my friends that have known me for years, when they see me playing that role, they're like, well, there's no surprise there. Of course, of course he can do that part. <laughs> you know, that's him. And there are elements of my character in, in that character, and that is pretty much across the board with almost everybody you see on television. A lot of people, a lot of actors are playing roles that have elements of their personalities in them, which is why they're so good and so believable at them. Uh, but not every part of of that character is me. There are parts of that character that I would like to have. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's not across the board, but there are some nuances that would be there. I, of course, do have a sense of humor. I like to smile. I like to laugh. And so that's me. I'm not as dry and emotionless as that character by his long shot. So let's see a clip from uh, of Gods and Men, Star Trek of Gods and Men. Uh, and this in this scene, we have uh, Uhura. Yes. We have Chekhov, um, and I'm going to let you explain it after we see it, and tell us how you got these people together, how you got Paramount Pictures to say, great, we love this idea, we, you know, we're going to let you do whatever you want, um, but let's take a scene, uh, a peek here, this is Star Trek of Gods and Men. What happened? Charlie was successful. Let's get the hell out of here. 
Enterprise, ready to beam up. Personal log, Stardate 7615.1. It doesn't seem like a year has passed since we restored our normal timeline. As I conclude my last entry as captain, my thoughts are not on that single grain of sand we might disturb accidentally, but on the fact that we are endowed with free will and can choose ideas that can either lead to deadly consequences or to joyous rewards. So truly, our destiny lies not in the stars, but within ourselves. Harrison, with you, we're talking to Tim Russ. You know him from Tuvok, from Star Trek Voyager. He also has directed a movie called uh, Of Gods and Men, Star Trek Of Gods and Men. That was Nichelle Nichols, Lieutenant Uhura, who Martin Luther King said to her in an airport one time, she had announced uh, famously at the time, that she wanted to leave Star Trek. Yes. That she wasn't enjoying it anymore, and, and a variety of other obvious uh, greater issues. And he said, you can't. You can't leave because you're really important. You are the first African American on national network television, right? Right. Demonstrating on the bridge of a battleship in a commander position. That's right. I mean, who'd ever seen this before, right? Exactly. And he said, you have you have an obligation to carry this through. And yes. she's been such a stalwart for civil rights ever since. Yes. When he, what he said to her is very is kind of interesting because a lot of us, uh, whether it's uh, superstar sports figures or, or people who are on television in, in these roles, uh, even though they're playing fictional characters and, f and fictional stories many times, uh, there is something to the fact that people are watching you and yeah. people are following you and people are, you know, they're they're uh, and, and, and maybe young children in many cases, and 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 you are an influence on them. So yes, if you what you do outside of that it becomes rather important. You know, it may not have been before you on television to you because nobody else knew what, you know, was watching you in that capacity. But when you were on television, say for example, I, if I'm doing iCarly, something like that, I've got to be aware of what m I would be doing outside of that. Th yeah. That if I was to do something really boneheaded and, and something that was uh, inappropriate or illegal, then that would take my career right down the, the pipe right there. But just, it would be all over. So, because because they're not going to be able to hire you uh, with that image out there in, yeah. in reality. Yeah, yeah. So you have to, you're an influence on young people. You're an influence on people to, in general. Uh, so there's something to think about in terms of that. And uh, Nichelle, uh, at that time, was uh, she was being portrayed as an officer on the bridge. And that was a very important role. Uh, that particular moment in the film, I can't give away the end of the story, but uh, you know there is something that occurs to our heroes in that story that uh, that uh, forces them to be uh, in, into a situation that that they are that they're not familiar with, um, and they're not even aware of themselves. And uh, the whole point of the story is to how they going to how they are going to extricate themselves from that situation right. uh, through the help of others. It is 27 minutes past the hour. Harrison with you, your new best friend. You are watching The Smart Show on KPFK 90.7 FM in Los Angeles, 98.7 FM in Santa Barbara, 93.7 San Diego, 99.5 in Central California, 99.5 in New York City. And we're talking to Tim Russ, the actor Tim Russ, coming up in just a couple of minutes after news with Mercy Malik. Tim is going to talk about the state of the world now, as seen through the eyes of a Star Trek character, as well as a director of the movie, Star Trek of Gods and When, that we are premiering, premiering in just one half hour. The entire 90-minute, unedited, real-time, end-to-end, letterboxed, stereophonic, woo yeah, version of that movie, never before seen, end-to-end, -end. and we're going to do it exclusively online, just for you, the fan of Star Trek, and it's full of fascinating political memes. In other words, it's all about activism, it's all about suiting up and showing up, it's all about changing the world. More than a science fiction movie and contains all the actors you've come to know and love from Ahura to Chekhov to Captain Harriman to pretty much everybody. It's all in there and that's coming up in just one half hour. But first, a little news with Mercy Malik. Smart Show. Go Harrison. News. 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 News update. Go Harrison News Time is 28 minutes past the hour, and I'm Mercy Malik with your reality check. 
On this show, we like to hold elected officials' feet to the fire as per their request, but every now and then it's useful. <laughs> yes, they asked for it. Really? We'll give it to him. But every now and then it's useful. To I get know some- Santorum does. Because he's we'll, into the kinky. Well, see, that's the catchphrase that I all my Barack Obama emails say that. Hold my feet to the fire. So that's what I'm all doing. All right, you hold Mr. him, baby. President, here I go. Back to my little nod, the difficulties that the president has to deal with. Every now and then it's useful to get an earful of what they have to deal with. Jack Gerard, president of the American Petroleum Institute, last week basically publicly threatened the president of the United States. Yeah. See, Mr. Gerard really wants Barack Obama to approve the widely feared Keystone XL oil pipeline, and he's not afraid to take the old school veiled threat approach to get his way. CommonDreams.org reports that Gerard delivered a speech at an oil and gas industry event in D.C. last week, which included the following message regarding Obama's impending decision. Quote, clearly the Keystone XL pipeline is in the national interest. A determination to decide anything less than that, I believe, will have huge political consequences. End quote. The American Petroleum Institute, for the record, is a lobbying firm patronized by mega oil companies, not exactly an impartial political observer. Greenpeace issued a public response, which included the pithy advice, quote, vote for yourself, not oil executives. It's 30 minutes past the hour. And now an update on an issue we've been following closely. Another U.S. radiology expert is warning against TSA airport body scanners, calling them, quote, a real danger to the public, end quote. The Sun Sentinel reports that Dr. Edward Dower, head of radiology at Florida Medical Center in Fort Lauderdale, says that radiation emitted by the scanners can encourage damage to the thyroid and the lens of the eye, as well as increasing the risk of breast cancer for those who allow themselves to be walked through the devices. But other than that? Other than that, they're perfectly safe. (laughs) Fine. Alarmists. (laughs) Dower says the danger emanates from the fact that the machines emit ionizing radiation, saying, quote, ionizing means it knocks the electrons out of your body, which breaks your DNA chain, which can cause death or cancer, end quote. Broward County Mayor John Rodstrom, who refuses to go through the devices himself, commented, quote, why would you buy a machine that emits radiation if you could buy one that didn't, end quote. The scanners in question are banned throughout Europe, but not here. It's oh 30 my min- God. Uh-huh. It's 31 minutes past the hour. And finally, an update on the status of the National Defense Authorization Act. You know that one that allows you or anyone you know to be disappeared without trial or even charges indefinitely. In somewhat encouraging news, a bill aiming to strip the NDAA of a few of its most heinous capabilities is attracting attention and co-sponsors on Capitol Hill. The Due Process Guarantee Act, I'm going to say that again, the Due Process Guarantee Act, introduced by... California Democrat Dianne Feinstein late last month has picked up 15 congressional co-sponsors and multiple online petitions in its support. The new bill's stated intention is, quote, to clarify that an authorization to use military force, a declaration of war, or any similar authority shall not authorize the detention without charge or trial of a citizen or lawful permanent resident of the United States, end quote. The good news here is that for all of us who are looking for a way to combat the evil that is the NDAA, here's our first great chance in the form of calling your U.S. senators and demanding that they support this bill. That is something you can do. The remaining prickly point is that even if slash when passed, anyone on planet Earth who is not a citizen or permanent U.S. resident would slash will still be subject to the possibility of indefinite detainment without trial or charge. So the next time someone claims that other countries, quote, hate us for our freedom, (laughs) it might just be that they hate us because we're not respecting theirs. Or ours. Well, now. That little blemish. The single. Thank you so much, Mercy. It, Mm -hmm. It is clearly the single worst law ever passed since Thomas Jefferson got caught touching Sally Hemings by his neighbors. But I was going to say not publicly. Not publicly. There, there was no law passed against that no. at the time. No. This is the single worst law. It makes I the agree. Patriot Act look like a, a, a massage with release. I agree. And and uh, the, the widely spread by 
by progressive, other progressive talk shows idea that, oh, this is really no different than it used to be. It absolutely is hugely different than what we were living under with the Patriot Act, namely because now there is no mandatory review by a civilian judge. And even under the Patriot Act, there was. Now there is not. This is infinitely a worse situation than we are living under previously. I just want to say that for the record. Bang it, honey. Bang that drum. Bang, bang, bang. For Go Harrison on KPFK 90.7 Los Angeles, 98.7 Santa Barbara, 93.7 San Diego, 99.5 Ridgecrest, China Lake. I'm Mercy Malik, and I am on fire with righteous indignation. <laughs> you can be my friend on Facebook and send me news tips for your reality check. News update. Harrison. All right. Thank you so much, Mercy Malik. Thank you, Geoff, by the way, who's uh, handling audio and handling traffic and keeping it all together just for us. Also, I want to acknowledge Billy Foster. He is our minister of all things technical. He is our operations guru. He is a full-on admitted, (laughs) self-avowed, we know what's coming up next, geek <laughs> yep he sure is he even geek. he even wears his ipad on a chain around his neck oh seriously one on the front and then one on the back and then he puts facetime on the cameras <laughs> and you can wa- look right through him and he thinks that's cool i think that's cool i think it's kind of cool too yeah, now that i great. think of it yeah. we have a triple giveaway as we go back to tim russ the actor tuvok from star trek voyager also the director of star trek of gods and men where you're about to see in a half hour the exclusive never before full uncut unexpurgated uncircumcised version end to end here on goharrison.com it is streaming only online only one time though this entire program will be in perpetuity you'll be able to go to goharrison.com and if you're watching right now you're watching tim russ i am holding a genuine triple i'm going to hand it back to mercy because the ooh and ah and cooing is real oh i like it see what do you think jeff can i get a triple she's liking it too much maybe oh triple there there's trouble with these triples my cat would kick that triples butt (laughs) (laughs) so we have we have an authentic genuine triple we've got a bunch of texts here mostly with the wrong answer but uh I can't n- answer that the, question. The 96th question. correct answer gets this genuine triple from the actual TV show. And the question is, again, who was who was the commander of the USS Enterprise 1701B, that's NCC, 1701-B in Star Trek Generations? You'll have to text to the number on your screen on GoHarrison.com that you're watching. Text to win this authentic triple, and we will not molest it too much so there's nothing left. The, you know something smaller than a cotton ball by the time we're done with it. I'm going to set it down here, this beautiful, authentic triple. Keep it far away from me. Who, who commanded the USS Enterprise NCC 1701B in Star Trek Generations. Coming up also at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, 9 p.m., 9 p.m. Eastern, a live Harrison's Hollywood Hangout with Tim Russ, because uh, right now we're doing the interview. We're going to open it up to the fans all over the world. All you need is a webcam. You can call in by that it looks like the brady bunch multiple boxes and you could talk one-on-one with tim russ plus we are opening up our 50 harrison hotline standard old-fashioned telephone lines you can call in from anywhere in the world and talk to tim russ live that's at 6 p.m pacific 9 p.m eastern tonight today tonight so uh, make sure you log on to GoHarrison.com and also remember Harrison'sHangout.com so you can learn how to get in with your webcam. Very easy, very fun. We'll have more giveaways then. Let's go back to Tim Russ. Now we're going to talk to him about politics and pop culture, the, the state of the world, the state of politics, the state of the GOP, the state of the Democrats, the state of Earth. As we look forward in the next five years, what does it look, through, uh, look like through the eyes of a Star Trek character? Back to Tim Ross. Now, how did you get Paramount to go for this? Because I understand they're rather protective of their franchise and uh, not particularly keen on sharing the toys. Yes, uh, well, Paramount actually doesn't have any problem with with, uh, you making the the film. Uh, Uh They only have a problem with what you do when it's done. Yeah. So if you're, you're, Uh you can't walk out unless you have a licensing deal with them. You can't just go out and sell it without their permission. So that's that's the only time that Paramount would have uh, concern about that, is if you're going to sell if you're going to stream it 
it, you know, on the internet, they don't have any problem with that. If you're going to give it away, no problem. If you're going to sell it, you have to work out a licensing deal with them first. Well, that seems fair and balanced, like it Fox. It certainly does, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's it's a lot more fair and balanced than Fox. It's it's pretty cut and dry and straightforward. Uh, whereas the other other is not. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> well, let, let's just take a moment and and very gingerly uh, sort of talk about world events here. Yes. Um, you as an actor spend a lot of time paying attention to humans. Yes. So that you can replicate the human condition as precisely as possible. Right. So that it's believable. Right. Even and then particularly in science fiction. You take it to the next level, the right. what-if human condition. Right. And I think you have to have a, a particular expertise to be able to imagine that which even really isn't. Right. And where we're going today, this ship of fools that we're on with icebergs right in front of us, but we're calling the iceberg, in fact, a candy cane or yes. something. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's science fiction in a way. <laughs> I... Uh uh, you know, I'm old enough to remember, you know, living through the 60s and uh, 70s with uh, the Vietnam riots, people being shot on campuses, uh, civil rights uh, demonstrations and protests and beatings and uh, fire hosing and all this stuff. The country was being literally torn apart, torn asunder because the establishment of what had gone on up to that point completely came apart. Women's rights were being uh, were being talked about. Gay rights were being uh, brought out into the open. All of these things happened at the same time, which must have been a really a shock for those who were part of the establishment, part of the old school, the old I guard. I think they're still the, shocked. Oh, that, well, this is what I'm, my point is that <laughs> I thought that was behind us. And even back then, it wasn't as bad as it is now. The, now, mm -hmm. to me, which I, I have to get my head around, we actually have a, a, a state-sponsored news network. That's what we have on television, a state-sponsored news network that is only portraying one party's ideas and or one's or a handful of people's concepts yeah. and ideas yeah, yeah. as opposed to the benefit of what the news was supposed to be when it started out, which was a, a, a money-losing uh, department of the television networks that never made money in the news yeah. until, of course, they started making it more like entertainment. But now we have this, the, the res what is supposed to be the responsibility of our media to broadcast the actual information. That is a tremendous disservice to the, to the people of the country. Whether it's in radio, which is free, or television, some of which is free and some of which is paid for. You have to have cable. Uh, across the country, the majority of people can't afford it. So they're only getting bits and pieces of these things that are, that are sponsored and owned by a handful of very, very wealthy people who want to completely change the country and turn it into something, that their own candy store. Actor Tim Russ with us here on Go Harrison. You're watching and listening to Go Harrison on KPFK 90.7 FM in Los Angeles and of course live streaming video at GoHarrison.com where this particular program will be in archive in perpetuity with next day delivery on YouTube and DirecTV. We're talking to Tim Russ because he's directed a full feature length Star Trek movie called Star Trek of Gods and Men which we're making available the entire feature length movie here on GoHarrison.com. And Tim is talking about the larger world in which we all live and making relevant the vision of Gene Roddenberry back in the 1960s when we had the Soviet Union as communists, we had Chinese communists, we had uh, infiltrators under every bed. And he was able, Gene Roddenberry, to bring the very enemies, uh, African Americans, communists, all together on the bridge of a basically an American warship and had them all work together in tandem. Over the course of two centuries, one legendary starship has journeyed to the outermost reaches of the galaxy and back home again. Her commanders have cheated death, her crews have celebrated life, and her ongoing mission has ingrained our very beings with eternal hope. Coming up at the end of the hour, we're going to be doing the exclusive online, uncut, 90-minute premiere of Star Trek of Gods and Men, only on GoHarrison.com.
Harrison with you. You are watching Go Harrison at GoHarrison.com with archives in perpetuity. Keyword Go Harrison on Facebook. Keyword Go Harrison on Twitter. We're talking to Tim Russ, the actor. You know him as Lieutenant Commander Tuvok from Star Trek Voyager. And he's talking about not only those projects, but what it means to be a good American uh, using science fiction as a platform for wide communication, all of us, when the mainstream media simply is falling down on the job. Yeah. And we just lived through, for the second time in, in 100 years, yeah. a major economic collapse caused by those very people who want to destroy the government, to minimize the government's role, and to minimize the power of the working class so that they can use us essentially for slave labor in the years. That, it is definitely a, a science fiction episode of the future that you could see on any television show, but it is actually in progress right now. So uh, obviously it is up to us uh, to focus on who we ascend into Washington as uh, congressmen and senators to represent us again to get the money and the power and the wealth out of our politics. It was there at the turn of the last yeah. century in the 1900s is where the uh, Great Depression occurred because they were in bed with the, with the corporate barons and the same thing is happening now. And it just, it just hit us. It just hit us two years ago, three years ago, when, when the, at the end of the Bush administration. So we've, we've gotten hammered. We've, we're feeling the effects still today. Uh -huh. And people, uh, you know, have to realize, dare I say, dare I bring up the, 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 the saying from, the, uh, from Vulcan lore, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Right. And right. that is it. That is the end of it. And, and Gene Roddenberry was not a commie. This guy was a World War II bomber pilot, yes. right? Yes. Who had a set of cojones the size of Rhode Island. <laughs> I met the guy when I was in college, starstruck, awestruck, yes. and asked him, well, you know, what's the, and he said, he said, we're already in a place where if we don't start to talk about all of us getting along, yeah. there's not going to be an us left. Right. And, and this was his prognostication. Yes. And now, amidst all of that, we're actually seeing articulated in reality um, this almost impossible scenario. If this were in some other country, we'd point and say, we better send in the UN and the tanks. Yeah. These, these people are stealing votes by the, you know, disenfranchising, uh, you know, millions of people of certain countries color why that's wrong yes uh, science is evil science is evil it's the evil knowledge is evil uh, facts and information are evil uh, I, I, all you can do I mean all you can do is really scratch your head as to what in the world I mean even if you even if you have it you know whatever side of the, of the fence you might be on the very basic question is, if you have a population that is, by the way, growing, you have a world population growing, resources that are going to be shrinking, uh, and, and, and things we're going to need in the future, why wouldn't it make sense to, for you, if you're in charge of a population the size of the United States, to focus on the, the welfare of your population, your citizenry, in terms of their education, and in terms of their health, and in terms of the resources we need to survive, why wouldn't you be thinking about policies that, that, that will be effective 20 years from now? Not even now, but 20 years from now. Why would you not be thinking about that, as opposed to trying to service a handful of very, very filthy, wealthy people, to the point where they don't even know what to do with their money? Uh, that's, I just scratch my head, you know, uh, to ask someone who has that kind of money to pay a few extra dollars in, in taxes when they, they don't even, when they're on their yacht, their, their fleet of accountants are doing all their books for them. It's not like they sit down and do them at the end of the year themselves. As, as one in Orange County told me, and what's wrong with that? Yeah. And, <laughs> And I think that's the key, is, and what's wrong with that? <laughs> and it's like, well, let's see, there's 7.3 billion people on this little orb right now. Yes. Uh, a third of Americans are now right around the poverty line. Right. Can't eat. Can't eat. Uh, food stamps are through the roof. Yes. And now even the food stamps and the unemployment compensation is being managed by Bank of America <laughs> at the taxpayer's <laughs> expense. Maybe it's yeah. just a little bit lopsided, and they pause and look at you 
right in the eye and say, and what's, what's wrong, wrong with, with that? that? And, and yes. That's hard. That's a very difficult thing. They are, um, it is a question of, of it, 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 actually, not, I want to say the word compassion or, or what's right and wrong. And there are a few defectors on their side, which we've heard of recently, who are, who are pretty, perfectly fine with uh, paying what they pay. I love what Elizabeth Warren said recently. She said that no, there is no such thing as a self-made billionaire or millionaire. These are they, because everything that they make and produce is produced by people. It's produced by us. The roads that they ship their goods on are paid for yeah. by us. All of the things they use outside of their own private houses are paid for by us. We helped them become billionaires. They didn't do it in a vacuum. So in fact, you know, it's not, there's no such thing as somebody who did it all by themselves. They all had help. So why is it unfair to ask for everybody? You know, like said Warren said, if, I, if a secretary is paying 20 29% in taxes and he's paying 17. What the heck is wrong with this picture, man? Harrison with you. We're talking to director and actor Tim Russ. You know him most famously as Lieutenant Commander Tuvok on Star Trek Voyager. He also has a recurring role on Nickelodeon's iCarly and has directed a feature-length Star Trek movie called Of Gods and Men, which we're making freely available here on GoHarrison.com. It can also be seen at OfGodsAndMen.com. And Tim is talking not only about about what it means to be part of the Star Trek franchise, but the larger world in which we live and sort of the responsibility that science fiction has to help clarify stuff that seems in now nowadays world to be so muddled and jumbled. You're watching us here on GoHarrison.com, Facebook keyword GoHarrison, Twitter GoHarrison, and also on KPFK, where we're broadcasting on 90.7 FM, Los Angeles 98.7 FM, and Santa Barbara. 937 in San Diego and 99 and a half in Central California. If the media is a handmaiden of either the federal government or in business interests like the Koch brothers, All right? And I, by the way, I I have to declare that I do enjoy a Koch Brothers brand, a Kimberly Clark toilet paper with which I wipe my <laughs> fundament. Um, Good choice. I'm doing my part. <laughs> Literally, uh, your part. <coughs> well, that's great if we can, if you can get the media to do that. Unfortunately, a majority of the media is also being manipulated and bought and controlled, and that's a big, big problem. You know, if uh, certain era, era radio hosts, uh, dare I say, uh, Rush Limbaugh, for example, can be heard from one end of this country to the other, from north to south, on radio stations which especially are free, especially south, yeah, especially south <laughs> and the Midwest, for free. Uh, because all the affiliate stations are owned by the, the companies and corporations that want him to be on the air. Yeah. I mean, he makes, I don't know, $48 million a year. And, what's, and what's wrong with, with that? that? <laughs> Except that there are no other radio hosts anywhere that are making that kind of break. And remember, Tim Russ, he said something very important two years ago. He said he was not participating in the recession. Ah, uh, well... Good well, choice. that would explain it, wouldn't it? Yes. Uh, with that kind of salary, why not? And so you scratch your head. Why would somebody pay somebody that much money to be on the radio when that's way, way outside the norm of what the scale is for most radio hosts? I but, can agree with that. Uh, you know, <laughs> I know that, and I'm not even in radio. So uh, you wonder why they're writing such a big check, because he is touting their message. And, and that is control over a very large percentage of the population who hear nothing else. If they don't get cable television, which a lot of them don't, they're only going to get their local news. Local news, they're not interested in giving you all the information. They're only covering local news. They're not going to give you all the, the deep stuff you need to hear. Some radio, yeah, they, they, like I said, is free. But you have to be able to find it and listen to it. And if it's not, if it's pervasive, it's, if it's just this, this message and these guys, Savage and the rest of them, then they're, they're never, the population as a whole, a good chunk of them, are never going to break that out. And it's just, it is absolutely absolutely uh, you know we have to the media as it were has to tackle these yeah. issues and really give us the information that needs to be done even the mainstream media some of it still doesn't ask the tough questions they when do they asked Kardashian about her necklace oh, God. Yeah, or or Snooky or somebody else. I, I dare yeah. dare I say, yeah. It if it's a, if it's Lady Gaga, they'll give her twenty minutes. If it's you know uh, somebody who's running for office, who's 
clearly not qualified for it and 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 has absolutely no clue what they're talking about uh, they'll never they don't question the comments they don't force them to answer the question that's been put forth they don't come back and say as a journalist well how do you how can you say that when you said this yesterday how can you say that when this is actually what's happening you know a, a great example tim russ is uh, a few weeks ago when i think it was wolf blitzer Wolf Blitzkrieg was asking a question <laughs> of of, <laughs> I love that. of Rick Perry, and it was the the thing about the death penalty. Yes, and Rick Perry said, "Well, you know, we've killed or." put to death, murdered, whatever the right word is. I'm not sure what the politically correct term is. Yeah. Uh, executed, annihilated, liquidated. <laughs> um, some 234 people, and there was a rouse of applause. Yes. Now, yes. if yeah. that had been in Germany, and a German politician said, yes, we have just killed 234 people in our <laughs> village, and the Germans stood up and started hollering and hooting and dancing on a place, I think we would have a problem. <laughs> if the French did that, if the Arabs did that. Yes. But here, we have lost perspective. Yeah. And and that journalist, remember remember when, when we were kids growing up, they had these things called reporters. Yeah. yeah. And a Back reporter would report. Now everyone's a journalist. And all a journalist means is you know how to type. Right. Or blog, right. or send porn, or do yeah. something important <laughs> like that, right? Yes. And the first question would be, do you realize that the whole room just cheered that you've killed all these people? Would you like to explain why that's a good thing? Yeah. That people are cheering at killing. Killing. Yeah. And by the way, you're killing because the worst thing people could do in this country is to kill. Right. So you've now just done the worst thing 234 times and you're a hero. Please explain, Lucy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, basically uh, the majority of the people that they execute statistically are uh, minorities and uh, that's number one that doesn't bother them at all because they're not they don't look like them and sound like them and talk like them so that's fine that they can kill them off. Um, we have a cowboy western you know way of thinking in this country that still exists today. Mm. Uh, there are laws uh, there's one just passed recently in a county in, in, in up in uh, Seattle my friend told me about where they uh, in Washington uh, where they can carry guns to Costco they can wear them on their hips in holsters to Costco 45 caliber right there 9 millimeter right on your hip you can wear it into the store that particular part of that county of that city decided that they could uh, it's okay for them to carry guns in public well, uh, on their hips so this and there's other places in the country we have a cowboy mentality in this country uh, take what you want uh, conquer enslave take what you want for your own benefit and that's then everybody else be damned that's the mentality we have that is what founded the country at the end of the day that's what happened at the beginning of this place um, people talk about America this and America that well you know America you know if you look at the history of the country and I as I teach my daughter I said you have to look at you have to understand history and what has happened before with humankind to understand what's going on now what may happen in the future you have to know what happened in the past and understand how people behave and how they act and what what we have done in establishing this country was murderous at the end of the day. Yeah. So uh, that's what it was built on. And that's the way we are. That's the, the European Western sort of culture. It's a Viking culture. It goes all the way back to the Vikings. And what's wrong with that? And what's wrong with that? <laughs> yes. And, 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 and thus, you know, when, when everything hits the wall and it really explodes and hits the wall, you know, then everybody's going to start scrambling and trying to figure out what to do. But of course, by that time, it may very well be too late. So I'm hoping that people wake up uh, as, a, as, a, as a whole, uh, at least those who might be on the fence, uh, those who might be independents, those who might have not decided which way they want to go yet, those who might have an open mind uh, to listen to what's really going on, try to figure out what's going on, and, 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 and learn the facts, the details, the history, all the things that people have said and done, and try to put that together to make sense. And, and, some, and just step back from it and ask yourself, does it make sense? Does it make sense to not can be concerned about the education of your own citizens? Does it make sense to have a citizenry that is unhealthy, that is sick all the time, or that has catastrophic illnesses that could have been prevented? Does that make sense to do that? 
to pay for it on the back side rather than the front side. Uh, does it make sense to spend money on wars and the occupation of other countries for endless amounts of time that get us no jobs and no benefits? Does that make sense? Ask if, if they can just ask themselves those questions then everything else, I would think, would fall into place. And to have those questions asked is half the difficulty. Half the difficulty. Is getting the questions out. And, and because you're a Star Trek guy, yeah. which means you're Googleable, which means you're taggable, right. which means that your wonderful insights and observations are going to be freely available to tens of millions yes. who might not have otherwise had those questions asked or been planted in their minds is an enormous service. And I think Gene Roddenberry is doing backflips is doing contortionistic <laughs> twists somewhere in his heavenly cloud because of that. So thank you for carrying the baton so brilliantly. Thank you for being such a great American. Thank you for being such a good intellectual, a good father to your daughter. Thank you. And You're once welcome. again, just putting the path, uh, the flashlight on the path of, of a buffoonery <laughs> that we're all unfortunately forced to walk. <laughs> it is my pleasure. Uh, and, and thank you for giving me uh, a microphone phone and a forum to actually be able to express that because that's something that I I would normally only be able to express to my friends you know uh, on the phone or whatever it may be and or to myself as I you know throw my shoe at the television set so it's nice to be able to have a, a forum to be able to get uh, the word out to people as to you know where I where I might stand and where I might come from just as as an actor as it were thank you very much for having me on the show I appreciate it Harrison with you, inviting you now to switch over to online. If you're still on the radio, go to GoHarrison.com to see the world premiere, the uncut version of Star Trek of Gods and Men. We're now leaving the radio station, switching exclusively over to the online audience, of which I am counting over 80,000 of you right now, queued up to watch the world premiere, uncut, end-to-end, -end, unexpurgated, uncensored Star Trek of Gods and Men which of course was directed by Tim Russ himself. He's also in it, along with Uhura Chekhov and a bunch of other people you know. I'm gonna give this one more shot. We've got 91 texts. <laughs> it's gotta be the 93rd now, the 93rd to win this triple. The 93rd text, the question was, who played the captain on the USS Enterprise 1701B, 1701B in Star Trek Generations? The 93rd correct text wins this authentic triple. And now without further delay, we are at the top of the hour. It's time for us to premiere the world event of Star Trek of Gods and Men. It's said if you move but one grain of sand, you run the risk of altering history. <laughs>